Genesis chapter 3 and verse 14. And Yahweh said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. And it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Shalom, brothers and sisters. This is your brother, Howie Allah. I want to give all glory and praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and we do so in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Grace and mercy be abound to hopeful elects that are dropped to four points of earth that are waiting on the second coming of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, and Mashiach. Introducing the envy of the devil. Now we are going on into the envy of Cain. Okay, so what we're doing here is we are showing, you know, a pattern of behavior of those that are actually come in the same spirit and mode, modality of the devil, okay? And so, as we do know in the prior lesson, the situation with Adam and Eve in the garden, we have been able to figure out the reason why the serpent, okay, who is known as the devil and Satan, envied Adam. And we realized that it was because of Adam's ability to serve the Most High in righteousness. And whereas we know that according to the book of Job, that Satan goes around to and fro the earth looking to do evil. In addition to that, whenever somebody is shown to be righteous and it is known to him, he then does things that will try and to overthrow that particular individual in their path. In the event of what happened in the garden, we know that the thing that he did, okay, he did not raise a weapon, he lied, okay? So what he did is he beguiled Eve by lying to her and twisting the words of the Most High, which led to her taking of the fruit and giving unto Adam. And this is the reason why man has fallen, okay? So that is the first event that brought sin into the world. And it was done through the wiles of the devil. So what we're doing here is we're moving on and we're going to see exactly what has happened after that. So we see it here in Genesis chapter 3 that there will be enmity between the serpent and the woman and between the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. Okay, now this is whole, a whole allegory, which, you know, you've gone over before, uh, but we're going to show you what this meant in the initial stage. So we do know that Adam and Eve did have children. So what we're going to do, we're going to go on to the next chapter and we're going to look and examine, okay, what happened as they had children. So this is Genesis chapter four and verse one. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain and said, I have gotten a man from Yahweh. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto Yahweh. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And Yahweh had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And Yahweh said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why is thy countenance fallen? If thou doest well, thou shalt be accepted and if thou doest not well sin lieth at the door and unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him so we see here that Cain was a tiller of the ground and Abel was a keeper of sheep okay there is, there is somewhat of an allegory to this as well but we see here that the whole thing was concerning what sacrifice was to be brought and we see here that Cain did not do the right thing and he brought the first things 
okay, the first of the, of the round as an offering to the Most High. And we see that Abel brought the first things of his flock and the fat thereof. And Yahweh had respect unto it because it was the correct thing to do. And we see that Cain saw that his offer was not respected and he became upset and angry. What we're seeing here in the initial phase is that Cain lacked wisdom. Um, it's very clear that he was not, um, you know, someone that knew exactly what he needed to do, but Abel had an understanding of what he needed to do. So we see here that in this situation, we know that Abel was in the right and Cain was in the wrong. And that right there, it being known to Cain that he did not do the right thing and it was not regarded, that really upset him. Okay, so we see here that there's already, you know, a difference between the two brothers. Okay, and we know that in verse 7, he was asked, you know, if he did well, wouldn't it, his stuff be accepted if he did the right thing? But if he does not do well, okay, then sin, okay, lieth at the door, meaning the sin is lurking. In this case, sin is, is a noun. It is an entity that can take over somebody or this energy, you can say, can be put upon him to activate a sin nature upon him. And so we see here that we know when we go back to Genesis chapter 3, we know that the serpent was going to get a seed that was going to have enmity with the seed of the woman. And this is where the beginning, all right, of the whole children of God and the children of the devil come into play, which is deeper meaning than what a lot of Israelite groups uh, go into. But the series is going to actually help brothers and sisters understand the full meaning behind you know, these two different uh, factions of children, so to speak, right? So now what we're going to do, we're going to continue going down because we know that the big part of the story is what happens in verse eight. So now we go down to verse eight. It says, and Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. So we know that Cain, okay, ended up killing Abel. Now, as we read earlier in Genesis chapter 4, this was clearly over the situation that happened with the sacrifices. Okay? So we know that him being upset, okay, really drew him to this energy where sin took hold of him and he was driven into murdering his own brother. Now, I'm gonna show you something. Um, this is from a different translation. And this is Genesis chapter four and verse eight from the voice translation. And as we read in that verse in under the voice translation, it says, Cain spake to his brother Abel when they were in the field Cain's envy of his brother got the better of him and he attacked and killed Abel. So we see here that when the envy, okay, remember the envy of Cain, this is what we're going into, is what consumed him to attack his brother and kill him. Now, what people don't understand is that envy doesn't always have to lead to actions of murder. What I mean by murder, meaning taking somebody's life. Envy can also go in the form of other areas of attacks, okay? Particularly, we talk about, you know, false accusations or, you know, raising a false report, slander, lying, okay? It can even lead to stealing, um, laying stumbling blocks, okay? for your brother or your sister to fall. These come into a whole different realm of things and behaviors in which one would exhibit being the children of the devil. And we see here with Cain, Cain took his brother to the field. Of course, Abel being his brother, trusted him, probably didn't think nothing of it that anything would happen. 
And what happened? As it said in the King James, he rose up and he slew him, right? So we know that this whole thing was driven by the envy that he had towards Abel because Abel had more wisdom than he did. Abel was doing the right thing. And the Most High had respect unto Abel because of his behavior. And Cain, he had not respect. And Cain knew this and it it drove him to madness and it caused him to go in this direction. You see, a lot of people don't understand that you have passive aggressive behavior and aggressive behavior. This right here is an aggressive behavior towards envy of someone, whereas you have more passive forms as well, which we'll get into in the future. So now we see here that we've established the envy of Cain. So we're gonna go into the New Testament in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 and verse four. By faith, Abel offered unto Yahweh a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts and by it he being dead yet speaketh. So we see here that he obtained witness that he was righteous. This is some of the same type of thing that happens. And that's one of the reasons why we had to go into the Job story uh, from the last series, because the witness that he got from the Most High that he was righteous was shown unto Satan and Satan was driven to try and turn him away from righteousness. Okay? That's why we had to go into that. There's also another way that we know it is that Yahweh testifying of his gifts. See, what happens with what the most high will do is that if a man is righteous and, and you got men okay and women operating in righteousness he's going to testify of their righteousness via the spiritual gifts that he gives them okay he's going to give brothers various gifts in the body to show that he, that he's witnessing of who they are to him okay that's one of the reasons why me and the brother Yalasop went into the different things about the gifts in the body, the positions in the body. So the Most High testifies of these things through these spiritual gifts that he gives to them. And one of the spiritual gifts that was exhibited with Abel was his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding. He feared Yahweh and he showed himself to be righteous by doing the right thing but this is something that hurt and ate at Cain because he was not righteous and he knew it now go on to the last precept this is the book of John chapter 3 and verse 10 in this, the children of Yahweh are manifest and the children of the devil. Whoso doeth not righteousness is not of Yahweh, neither he that loveth not his brother. For this is the message that ye heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, meaning he was of the wicked one, the, the serpent, Satan, the devil, Okay, and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Marvel not, my brethren, if the world hate you. So that's one of the lessons we learn. Marvel not if a false brother hates you. Marvel not if a false sister hates you. Remember, this thing is all judged based on who's doing works of evil and who's doing the works of righteousness. We have to just call it plain upon tables, what it is and what it isn't. So we have to understand if somebody hates you, why do they hate you? Examine that and understand what the true meaning of loving your brother is. 
if somebody is orchestrating acts of attacks because they envy a brother, then you know what it really is and what it really isn't. And this is one of the reasons why we have to examine this, okay? Because if you really love your brother, you do not choose to harm him. You do not put stumbling blocks. You do not bear false witness. You do not raise a false report. You do not go about spreading malicious lies. You don't go about stealing from that person. You do not covet any of the thing that is his or hers or anything that is of thine neighbors. All these things and stuff that you have to understand when it comes to the commandments of loving your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you want done unto you. Now what Cain could have done is he could have just simply went to Abel and asked him, how did you know what to do? He should have looked at him as a brother that could serve and help him reach a higher level. Instead, he chose to be envious. And this is where Cain made a grievous mistake. So we're going to go ahead and read that next verse in verse 14. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Whoso hateth his brother is a murderer, and ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. So this is how we know if someone is a false brethren, someone who envies their brother, wisdom will flee from an envious man. Okay? So we have to understand what is going on, right? And we see it with what is going on with Cain and Abel. And we see the situation as it is plain and it continues to manifest, okay, to this very day, the envy of Cain. So hopefully this is edifying to you, brothers and sisters. And again, I want to give all glory and praises to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh. And we do so in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Grace and mercy be bound to the hopeful elect scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. Shalom.